In February of 2025, Elegoo announced a budget core XY printer called the Centauri Carbon. Retailing at only 300 US dollars, its announcement was accompanied by a wave of influencer marketing that was nearly universally positive. Uh, thousands and thousands of people ended up buying one, including myself, and for the most part, people have been pretty happy with it. But with 300 being so much cheaper than anything comparable, a lot of the community was curious about how they managed to make the printer so cheap, when its competitors were easily asking two to three times the price. And while various people have various theories, one thing that's pretty obvious is that a lot of it came down to a rushed development process and dirt cheap electronics. It's a different matter for the software. They didn't just cheap out on the software for the Centauri Carbon. Allegedly, they straight up stole it. When the printer was announced, Elegoo made it very, very clear to journalists and reviewers that the Centauri Carbon was running its own proprietary software. It was definitely not running Clipper, the open source software that most modern printers base their software off of. They were very, very explicit that it was not Clipper. They stated that it wasn't even possible for the machine to run Clipper. But if you looked up the title of this video or the thumbnail, you might have gathered that Elegoo was lying. The Centauri Carbon pretty definitively runs Clipper. Um, I'd like to make it very clear that reviewers had every reason to take Elegoo at their word. The Centauri Carbon's electronics are about as far away from a standard Clipper setup as possible. And several reviewers made the pretty reasonable conclusion that there is no way the printer had any capability of running Clipper. Enter Open Centauri, a community-led project based around documenting and reverse engineering the Centauri Carbon. Uh, much like the Open Neptune project before them, the end goal for Open Centauri is to offer an open source firmware alternative to the Centauri Carbon printer. So, when contributors to the Open Centauri project started digging around in the software, they found repeated references to Clipper. After a bit of further exploration, they were not only able to confirm that the Centauri Carbon was 100% definitely running Clipper, but specifically Clipper 0.9.1, an ancient version of the software from 2020, almost a full five years before the printer's release. Elegoo, or potentially their partners at Jidu, had taken a similar approach to Anycubic's Cobra Pro 2, right down to the Anycubic logos in the boot folder. They made what I can only call a Franken Clipper solution, which was a setup extensively mangled to work around the printer's extreme hardware limitations. So while this knowledge is invaluable for reverse engineering the printer and providing an alternative firmware solution, the reason I made this video in the first place is because Clipper's distributed under a GPL license. One of the foundational elements of the GPL3 license is that any modified version or derivative of the software must also be licensed under GPL3. And if you distribute the software, such as put it on a 3D printer and sell it to consumers, the source code must be provided to those consumers on request. So members of the Open Centauri project sent Elegoo a formal request for the source code. And without fail, all of them received some variant of a form response, something along the lines of we're not in the habit of providing source code, or the request has been forwarded to our D&D, we're waiting to hear back. After a month of these emails along these lines, and an extremely active support thread on Elegoo's official community discord, Elegoo finally provided a concrete response. The firmware for the Centauri Carbon is closed source and will not be provided. Well, so what? It's just a silly software license used by neckbeards, and nobody actually cares about it. Nobody actually honors it. They're just saying whatever they want to say and slapping it on their software. But the interesting thing about the GPL family of licenses is that from a legal perspective, the courts really do care about the license. Uh, across the world, including in China, um, they've repeatedly upheld the GPL family of licenses as legally binding, and they've 
and force compliance through the courts. Um, Alagu themselves care about licensing and intellectual property quite a bit, which, you know, feels like if you're gonna do that and then steal other people's work, there's maybe a little bit of hypocrisy going on. From a moral perspective, not just a legal one, there's a lot to care about. Elegu blatantly lied to reviewers, journalists, and even consumers. They have moderators on the official Reddit going through and deleting proof. Basically stole a project from the community, tried to cover it up, and profited off of it without giving anything back. And from a consumer perspective, it's only beneficial to have access to the source. Elegu, quite frankly, sucks at updating their firmware. Their second most recent firmware update had thermal runaway problems, and which, you know... Thermal runaway is that tiny little issue on 3D printers that can kind of result in a 3D printer catching fire. And less severe bugs? Uh, their most recent update broke the web UI. There is an ongoing issue where the printer sends out like 100 gigabytes of junk data every month just checking connectivity. And even if these weren't issues and they were actively updating their firmware, who knows how long that would last for. They have a habit of discontinuing support for previous printers. Also, this version of Clipper that they're running is ancient. It's like five years old. It's filled with bugs, all sorts of security vulnerabilities, and there's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't want this version of Clipper running on your printer. Having access to the source code means that members of the community can patch those vulnerabilities, patch those bugs, and fix all these outstanding issues that Elegu seems to not really have the capability of fixing themselves. All of this brings us to the final question of, okay, this is bad, but like, what can any of us do about it? And when it comes to the legal aspect of it, there's not much we can do. The only party with grounds to sue is Clipper, and they traditionally have not sued uh, companies that have broken their license. They've just kind of blacklisted them from all support. Um, Elegu isn't the only 3D printing company that's failed to honor their license, and it's not going to be the last. And lawsuits are really expensive. On the other hand, there's plenty of companies that have released their source code after community pressure. Elegu has kind of leaned really, really hard into the community and influencer aspects of this printer. So raising awareness in the community is invaluable. While the average user might not have a lot of impact on the company, the, uh, the big influencers definitely do. This is a company that relied on sending out review units for the majority of their marketing push. And they sold countless thousands of these printers through the reviews of these creators. Even if only a handful of these creators refuse to play ball until Elgu releases the source, it could have a tremendous impact. Elgu relies on these creators for marketing, and the opportunity cost of not having them review their printers would be absolutely massive. Even just having them do a less than favorable video about Elgu and these source issues could probably have a pretty huge impact. With all that said, even if they never release the source, and we do want them to release the source, let's be clear. There's still a huge difference that the average person can make. Um, anyone with any technical savvy, which is probably a lot of you, uh, should check out the Open Centauri project. When it comes to getting the open source firmware running on the printer, they've gotten pretty far, um, but there's a few substantial roadblocks still left before it's fully feature complete. Um, anyone with a solid understanding of firmware development, reverse engineering, or Linux operating systems would be basically invaluable to the project right now. Even if we never get the official source, at the very least, the community can make sure that the printers don't really become $300 paperweights. So yeah, that's that. If you could maybe not share the video, but share some of the Reddit posts, share the Open Centauri Discord, or just tell people what's going on, it would be greatly appreciated.